Hey, so what's going on guys? Make here with Driven Tech Reviews and welcome back to another video. So today I'm in my X70 and we got our very first upgrade. So right here I have the works performance air filter for this car. So you might be wondering why I'm actually changing the air filter when the car is only about 1,000, 2,000 kilometers on the odometer. But uh, I do like something better than stock because the paper air filter that comes with the car is actually kind of restricted. In terms of airflow of course this is not going to get you like 15 20 horsepower that's definitely not the case but i do want my engine to actually breathe better and i do like maintaining my own filters so that's why i went ahead and get this and on top of that i got this filter at the old price so the old price of uh, 170 ringgit around that 169 to 170 ringgit but the new one is going to go up by a hundred ringgit so now it's at 269 i believe 270 ringgit some even sell it at 280 ringgit and that is very close to the KNN version. Personally, I was actually looking for a high flow air filter that is like the dry version and not the one with the oil just because it's easier to maintain and in the long run, it actually doesn't dirty your math sensor. I've actually had pretty bad experience uh, with my first car when I was using an uh, oil filter just because once you actually wash it and reapply the oil, you can never get the same amount as what the factory applied. So when you apply too much oil, it just dirties the inside of the throttle body and also all the sensors and then it causes issues with misfiring and stuff like that but anyways uh the one from works i've actually used it on a couple of cars which i own and this filter has been reliable i should say almost all the filters are the same in terms of the oil filter uh, of course a lot of people like can end just because it is a US brand and stuff like that. Works is a Taiwan brand, if I'm not mistaken. It's a similar one that Simota actually produces because they are technically the same company, just a rebrand. So, anyways, um, I decided to go for a drop in with the X50 just because it's SUV and not a performance car or whatever. So, I like my Sirocco, which is a performance car. I went with the intake kit, but I don't think it's necessary to use intake kit on the X50 and I believe the works intake kit from my experience with the Potam Preve which I had before uh, it's kind of a hassle to actually get out the filter and clean you have to open so many balls and the bolts tend to drop in the engine bay you know if you guys work on cars it's such a pain in the butt so I decided to go with something very simple so the airbox only has five screws which I'll be showing you guys later five screws and then that's it you actually just take out the original filter and replace it with this it's the same step if you do want to buy your own replacement filter uh, original proton paper air filter and also replaces the same steps so you can watch this video if you want to find more information and the steps on how to actually change out the air filter so anyways without further ado if you haven't subscribed to this channel do hit the subscribe button and also enable notifications so you get notified with the latest content and videos which i post and let's get on with the works high flow performance air filter installed on my Proton X50. All right guys, so you can see I've popped the hood on my X50. So first we need to locate where the air box is. So you can see this square thing right here. So this is the air box. And you have five Phillips head screws. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. So of course you do need to take them out with uh, caution because they're not like the Volkswagen ones, they don't hold on the box itself it will tend to drop out so you have to be careful with that make sure you use both hands so let's remove the screws and i will show you guys how to remove and install the new filter okay so this is our drop-in filter so you get the work sticker of course and then you get the filter itself right here so you do not have to disconnect this part right here just leave it there make life easier just lift it up from the top half you can see the filter is right there so let me put the camera down so we can give you a better angle and just lift it up just like that and basically this is the original paper filter so very simple and straightforward so i'll be keeping this because it's only got less than 2000 kilometers on it so this is the new filter just get it unwrapped okay so another disclaimer is that definitely you do want to clean the inside of your airbox first you can see there's like sand and stuff like that because they get trapped in here and then they get like drained out through a small hole on the inside of the box so you have to make sure that this is clean okay so once you have done that now we can begin installing the filter so it's it's more like a rectangle actually 
So the longer ends on the top and the bottom and the shorter ends are on the left and the right. So from there you actually get a pretty good fitment and that's all. It's as simple as that. So now you need to make sure the top half actually fits in perfectly before you start screwing it in. Make sure the filter is not like stuck in between the housing. Just to make sure. So now we're all set. Let's screw in the five screws and we'll be done. All right, guys. So now after we have done the install, it's good to check. Just start the engine and see whether there are any fault codes. Of course, there won't be any fault codes. It's just a drop-in intake. It's not like modifying the whole intake box or whatever, doing a custom one. But uh, yeah, it's still better to be safe. So I do follow that uh, that standard, I, at least in that, that's a practice that I do follow. After I do any modifications of my car, especially when it comes to the engine or any uh, exhaust system, I do a start just to make sure that the computer checks the car and make sure that it's not throwing any fault code or any unwanted faults uh, that may occur during driving. So yeah, let's just give it a start. So it's a good practice when you do start up your car, do the initial checks, let the ECU check the car and so on and so forth. Make sure the lights go off means it's done checking. Then only you step on the brake and start the car. So you can see no fault codes right here, no engine check light, nothing. Everything is good to go. So. That's about it for this video. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did like it, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel for more content just like this one. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.